Road dog in reality, road dog in reality, road dog in reality, road dog in reality. Uh, today's raw doggy reality will be about a Pascal's wager. Do you know what that means? Well, let me tell you. Pascal was a existentialist, kind of, or just like a Christian thinker. And he talked about the existence of God. And he said, either God exists or he doesn't. But if you live your life as if he does, you're going to have a better life. All right, good, cool enough. That's fine. We're going to do it not about God, but we're going to do it about the idea that you actually passionately love all the, the crap that's happening in your life. That your subconscious is actually manifesting these kinks of shitty situations in your life because it's getting something out of it. Yes, it might be getting something shitty, but that sh shittiness is familiar and... So your subconscious keeps manifesting the same shitty things. I got this from Jung and from Carolyn Elliott, who happens to be a friend of mine's friend, um, who wrote a book called Existential Kink. And she postulates that if you behave as if everything was chosen, even the shittiest situations in your life, because you're getting something from it, like a negative pleasure... And this doesn't mean like a one-off situation, like you just got laid off, then you need to mourn for that. Or just like someone dies, like that's not like, oh, I manifested that. She's really talking about uh, repetition compulsions. So when you start to really own that your constant resentment has a payoff, that your constant guilting yourself has a payoff, you're, you're basically doing kink with yourself. You're being a sadist and a masochist at the same time. And the sooner you accept that, the sooner you can make it conscious and then you can either keep whipping yourself or you can choose something different. Much like in sex, maybe you're into BDSM, you own it, and then by like making it instead of taboo but okay, you then can either decide to have connected sex or you could like connected sex. BDSM could be connected, but you could have like typical intimacy sex or you could have BDSM sex, whatever you want that day because you have choices. You don't just have one automatic compulsion that you have to do because it's naughty. So similarly, if I want to live my life in, well, not if I want to, but if I find myself living my life in scarcity and getting this negative pleasure from like, oh my God, I don't have enough money. Like, I, I can feel free to do that, but I can also make it conscious that that's a little whipping game I like to play in my psyche that keeps me at a, a certain level. And by making it conscious, I can either decide to keep, oh my God, or I can be like, yeah, I'd like to have a conscious relationship with money where I'm like raw dogging reality with it a little bit and being like, there's abundance. So there's more choices when you can admit that the shit that you keep doing to yourself is actually something that some part of your subconscious loves because of the negative pleasure of it. So examples include scarcity, uh, feeding the baby goat of resentment over and over again. He shouldn't have done this to me. She shouldn't have done that to me. Um, addiction, like, oh, I hate it that I have this addiction. But you actually love it because it keeps you distracted and small and then you don't have to go write your play or novel or... Do, do your album. So I'm going to read to you the way that I say out loud in front of a mirror certain reminders. I have several that I do every single day. No, that's a lie. I don't do them every day, but I like to do them because it brings consciousness and humor to my habitual repetition compulsion. So I'm going to say it to you just like I say it to the mirror. I will guilt myself for at least three hours per day. If I offend or disappoint anyone for any reason. Feeling supported and safe is utterly forbidden no matter what. I am totally 100% committed to doubting my value and worth. 
I am utterly not allowed to feel total self-forgiveness. A little self-forgiveness is okay, but never total self-forgiveness. My value is completely dependent on other people's opinions of me. I will continuously find flaws in everyone stupid enough to love me. The more I reject my own creative work and my own being, the more I can get approval from authority figures. I agree to relentlessly shame and repress my sexual and aggressive feelings towards others so I can only feel them as free-floating anxiety and depression. I am 1,000% committed to insulting myself whenever I fail at anything. My deepest value is to feel bad about myself and to help my loved ones feel bad about themselves by re relentlessly reminding them how they disappoint me. Now, why does that work? It's not really typical law of attraction affirmations. It works because it raises consciousness about the ways that I'm already operating. So I love to make myself wrong. Now I can admit that I'm getting off on that. And then by admitting that I'm getting off on that, I see that I'm doing it. And I'm like, oh, I guess I don't have to do that. Maybe there's a gentler, softer way I could be with myself. So can you practice that? Can you dare to admit all the ways that you beat the shit out of yourself and how you're actually getting a negative pleasure from it? It's not the easiest concept. People think, oh, no, I do this because I want that. Yeah, consciously. And then you have a subconscious that is trying to keep you small and familiar and not die. And it does a terrible job. Sometimes it actually kills you trying to keep you from dying. That's a lot of what addiction is. The tragic irony of addiction is we think our feelings are going to kill us. So then we go to these behaviors that actually kill us. <sighs> Suck on that. So if you can just admit to yourself that you love shame, you passionately love it. I mean, whether it was handed down to you through intergenerational trauma or this culture, it's not your fault, but operate as if your subconscious loves it and it's getting this negative pleasure out of it and then see if you can transform that way. Same thing with uh, scarcity, fear. I mean, I passionately adore fear. I love to do like a nuclear holocaust situation in my head. Uh, apparently I love it because I've been doing it for a long time. I love like global warming emergencies. I was in one, um, you know, I love to play in my mind, you know, gun violence. Like I'm not saying these things don't happen. It, it's not like all irrational fear. It's just that I get a negative pleasure from being in that horror movie in my head. The more I admit that I can be like, well, what's happening here and now? Here and now, I have something to be grateful for. Here and now, I'm okay. Here and now, I'm part of a quantum field that is safe. Ultimately safe. So, that's some examples of how I get off on fear. So, the assignment would be, if you want an assignment, spend 15 minutes meditating on how you love negative pleasure in some area of your life. And just... Close your eyes and go within and, and feel the sensations of all the ways that you actually love, fear, shame, blame. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I love having this person in my life who's so annoying. And I can talk about them all the time with my partner because they're just so, I hate that they're like that. No, you love that they're like that because it gives you something to do with your energy to block yourself. To blame is to be lame. So see if you can do 15 minutes of meditating on negative pleasure. And I invite you, if you want to do some affirmations like I do, they're deeply transformative. It's weird. Uh, that's my uh, raw dogging reality for the day. For more, subscribe to my video. Work with me, DaveCashMensCoach.com or send people my way if you're not identifying as a man. You can work with my beautiful wife who has more Jungian shadow stuff to teach. Good day to you. See you tomorrow.